Welcome everyone. I'm Devora. I'm filling in for Kana. I am doing the meditation this evening, and this is not the first time I'm doing it. I am doing a redo because it didn't record when I did it with the other ladies. So let's get started by noticing your breath and noticing your feet, wherever they are in your body, wherever it is. And I'm going to share my screen. And this is a picture of the Shomron. And we're going to start by just noticing our breath and noticing our body wherever it is. Using the in breath, straightening the spine, noticing the out breath. Noticing if you have a busy mind. And if so, then you can just label it thinking, or you can even take your hands and say, take these thoughts. Move them aside. We'll get to you later. Let's do a kind of body scan, just to kind of notice the breath and notice any sensations that might be prominent. Starting from the feet rounded on the ground, the lower legs, the knees, the upper legs, the torso, the back, And as we're doing this, notice if you have any sensations, such as discomfort or tightness, or maybe it's relaxed. That's also of note. Notice any tightness in the lower or the middle or the upper back, or maybe in the gut, or heaviness or tightness in the chest. the shoulders, in the arms, in the hands, coming back to the neck, the jaw, the face, and let's be curious if there are any particular emotions or sensations that came up while we were doing that. And we're going to take those emotions and sensations and invite them to be part of today's practice. Um, the intention for this morning, which for me is the evening, is a section from this Parsha, Parsha case. The intention of a bracha, where the Torah says, Beata Marta, Eti, 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 Imcha. And the Midrash Rabbah says, the gracious Rabbah says, the use of the two words, doing good, signifies Haiti, doing good on account of your merits, and Eti. Eighty doing good on account of your father's merits. So with that in mind, we're going to set that aside for a little bit. And we're going to think about a bracha. Let's think about a time when someone gave you a bracha. A blessing that may have been, it may have been something from a small thing that just kind of shifted things for you or it 
And it may have been from a child to you, or it may have been from a parent, or it may have been from a Rebbe, or a Mashpia. It doesn't matter. Whoever this bracha was from, think about how they gave it, who was there, and how you received it. Let's just breathe into that story and use your imagination, as Hannah would say, of where you were when you got that bracha. And who was with you and who gave it to you? And how did that bracha open up something that was not opening up for you? And how long ago was this? Was it re recently or was it a long time ago? And if you find that your mind is drifting and thinking about other things, invite that busy mind to relax and let you focus on this memory of receiving a bracha and how that bracha changed your life or that of someone you love. And it doesn't have to be a huge miracle story. It could be just something that made you happy for a moment or something that opened an opportunity that you didn't see. And I can tell you a story about a bracha that I received when I was in my late 20s. Now I'm in my late 60s. So it was 40 years ago. I was considering going back to school to study as a psychotherapist. And back in the early 80s, women who were mothers, and my community didn't do that. And I didn't want to make that decision on my own. So I wrote a proposal to Rubava Jareva. And I asked him for his bracha. And within less than a week, I guess, another Adorno called and he said, here are the Rebbe's instructions. It must be with the Haskamha of your husband. Your husband has to agree to it. It must be according to halacha, and you must be in consultation with a rub who specializes in medical ethics related to psychology. And it must be the training and the practice in a way of Sneas and halacha. And if you follow these guidelines, then the Rebbe's bracha was assured. As Kiralatzion, I will remember you at my father-in-law's grave. Well, this was a bracha that I received when I was 28 or 29. And it took about, whoa, 38 years for the bracha to be Mithuyam. But that's okay. I kept my end of the bargain. And the Rebbe kept his end of the bargain. Let's shift gears. And let's think about someone who you know. Maybe you know them well, or maybe you don't know them so well. Who needs a bracha? 
And let's have the intention to send the bracha to that person. And let's intend that whatever it is that that person is struggling with, maybe it's parnasa, maybe it's health, maybe it's success in work or mental health, whatever it is. Maybe you personally know someone who's serving. I'm guessing you for sure know people who are serving at the front. So this could be intended for someone that is near and dear to you serving in the front. And let's send them a bracha. May you be safe. May you be healthy. May you have shalom. We can use the Berkha Kohanim. Ibarecha Ka Hashem, the Yishmarecha, the Er Hashem Panav Elaha the Yuchuneka, the Sa Hashem Panav Elaha, the Yasin, the Ha Shalom. I'm going to make sure that my recording is still going. Yes, it is still going. Since I got this far, I don't want to have to start all over again a third time. May you have success to the person who you are sending this bracha to. May you be safe. May you be healthy. May you live a long and productive life. May you have shalom. Let's take a minute or two and send those intentions to that person who needs that bracha. And let's shift gears now and let's envision all of Claudius Raul coming back to this quote. Beata Marta, you said you would bless us. Eiti, Haiti, Eiti, Imcha. Haiti, on account of your merits, on account of the merits of our fathers and mothers and all the previous generations. Not just the Tehillim of the present times, but the Tehillim of the past thousands of years to all of Claudius Raul, and particularly to those who are hostages and those who are serving and are endangering in order to protect the safety of Claudius Raul all over Heritage Raul and all over the world. And when I did this the first time, I told a story that I read from Ellie Wiesel. That Ellie told the story of Rav Baruch of Mezebush, who was a, a chassid of the Magad of Mezrich. The Magad was a chassid who took over after the Baal Shem Tov. And Rav Baruch of Mezebush was a complicated guy. He would lose his temper. He took donations and lived high with lots of beautiful things. Unlike most anybody else who was a Rebbe. 
and he seemed to be egotistical as well. Not only that, but when he was learning, when he, in his younger years, when he was learning, everyone else was learning and he was playing games. At that point, his colleagues were like, what is going on? And the Magad of Mesrich told them, you don't know this man. His holiness and his games are higher than your learning. And another story that Eli Wiesel told the Reb Baruch was arguing in his household. I think it was with his wife. I'm not sure. I don't remember. And someone was watching that and was shocked. And the Baruch looked at them and they said, these arguments are because of the gullahs, because of the exile. And the arguments are a way of being the talking, of fixing and rectifying the exile. And having in mind, that not everybody we know is easy to get along with. Israelis sometimes yell a lot. Everybody has their limits and their anxieties. And as a whole, let's send a bracha of shalom. That we should, the connections that we're feeling now should continue even after this crisis is over. And it should lead us to a greater level of Shalom and Shabbos. Let's just breathe and imagine sending light and compassion to those who obviously we love and those we obviously have difficulty loving. Which we agree with and those we don't so much agree with. Those we understand and some we don't understand. That the ahava, the love that we send and the bracha that we send should be avas chinam, free, no strings attached. And as we breathe in and out, you can have the intention of seeing the letters in the word shalom. Shin, Lamed, Bar, Man. Sending shalom out to all those who, all the Jews who need it since we all need it. And the bracha of freedom for those who are captive, whether captive in the tunnels of Hamas or whether captive in our own limitations that we find ourselves in. That we should come out of this in the merit of the current generation and in the merit of all the previous generations. Yasem Racha Shalom. And as we're doing this, let's notice the sensations again. Notice your body wherever it is, whether you're sitting or standing or lying down. You can open your eyes, reorient back into the room. Thank you.